Somewhere in time. 
another, but it, I guess it brings it in there. It's uh, called, Thank You, Lord, for Your Blessing on Me. And though my mother had been gone for a long time, uh, but she did have an impact on my life. She was a person that uh, prayed for me, and I'm sure because of her prayers and the prayers of other people, I am where I am today. And so this is, uh, while the world looks upon me, uh, as, I tra as I struggle along, they say I have nothing, I've got nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing, and now I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon me.
Well, good day up there in uh, Media Land. And this Mother's Day, and we want to greet all the mothers in our listening audience today from the Hillgrade Pentecostal Assembly, wishing every mother a very happy Mother's Day. And we trust that you will enjoy this special day belonging to you today, really. It's really Mother's Day. We are going to turn to the Old Testament to Exodus chapter 2, and we're going to be talking about the mother of Moses. The mother of Moses. Uh, and this uh, second chapter of Exodus. And uh, as we come into the beginning of this chapter, we are introduced to this mother of Moses, a mother who was uh, who portrayed uh, great character and uh, confidence and courage. And she is among the heroes of faith in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And I want to look at, first of all, this mother and her little man. Now I've heard mothers call their babies, uh, male babies, my little man. So I've got a feeling that probably Jacobin might have called her boy, her little man as well. So, uh, and uh, in this second verse, the Bible tells us that uh, when this woman conceived Jehoshaphat and bare her son, when she saw him, he was a goodly child, and the Bible says she hid him for three months. That's for good reason. We'll mention a little later. And uh, I am sure that uh, I don't know how she felt really when the midwife said, Jacobin, it's a boy. And right away she was thinking of what he would have to face because uh, Pharaoh had brought in the decree that every male child would be thrown into the river Nile. And because of the fact that the Egyptians were scared that the, the Israelites would overpower and would outnumber the Egyptians. But uh, I'm sure that, uh, as the midwife said, you, you have a boy. And uh, I'm sure that uh, when Jacobin looked at him, she must have said, like must all mothers say, isn't he sweet? And uh, I know that all babies, babies are sweet. And uh, they're the sweetest to their mother than anyone else. And they're all cute and they're cuddly. And of course, Moses was no different. But the mother of Moses, Ergeachabed, uh, by faith, she felt that there was something special about this boy, this beautiful newborn baby boy that she named it Moses. Moses was a born, as we alluded to, in a time of perversion and pain, a time of darkness and degradation and desperation, really. So, but in spite of all the trouble that they were facing at the time that Moses was born, uh, Mother Jehoshaphat knew that she had born a special boy. And uh, in fact, the book of Hebrews talks about, over in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, I think it's down in verse 23, the Bible says there, by faith when Moses was born, and uh, he was in three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child. He was somehow a different child, a peculiar child that was different. And then it says this, and they were not afraid of the wrath of the king. So they were not afraid of the king's decree. By faith, they were going to trust God. And so she did not fear the king or the orders that he had given to the midwives that they were to 
throwed it into the river. And so when the midwife said to Jacobed, it's a boy, uh, I guess right away uh, Jacobed began, began to think of what he was facing, what this boy was facing because of the decree. But Jacobed had, had faith, she had faith in God. And in this account that we had before us, we see her faith coming to the forefront. It seemed like when they were, she was facing the trouble that her faith began to shine a little more. And so the Bible says in the last uh, part of uh, verse number two that uh, she hid him for three months. Uh, so that the king would not know that she had this boy. And so when she was not able to, to hide him any longer, she came up with a plan. She had a plan for a little man. She came up with a plan. Now I don't know if they had bassinets back there or not, but uh, it's a possibility that they did because they wove them out of straw and things like that. And I kind of think that, uh, that uh, maybe Jacobin had a bassinet for her boy. And, uh, and so uh, I don't know if she thought about uh, using the model of the bassinet because the Bible tells us she made a little hark and really it was a basket and uh, out of straw. And, uh, and so she was making a basket boat for her little boy, a one baby size boat to put in that river to flow and to keep him alive. And uh, the thing about that, that, that moved me somewhat is that she made that little basket boat and they placed him in that very river where he was supposed to die. And, uh, and it seems like that uh, old Pharaoh, she did defy when she put that boat there in the river, that little basket in the river. So, this, uh, so the first thought was uh, the mother and her, and her man, her little man, and then we think about the mother and her means, the means that she used. The plan that she came up with. Her means was a basket boat. But of course she done a good job on it because the Bible says that she pitched it within and without really. It was tar according to the Greek. Uh, she, she done it all over outside and inside. So she made it watertight for her little boy. And, and so... Uh, it tells us that in verse number three of this chapter of what she did with it to, to keep it from leaking. And so it was faith that caused her to go to work. So it tells us she didn't have dead faith, she had a working faith. She went to work. She had faith in God and what she did proved that she had faith in the Lord by building this little boat, if you will, basket boat for her body. For the Bible says faith without works is dead. But she showed that she had a living faith. So let us go quickly. We have uh, uh, the mother and her man, or little man. We, we have the mother and her means that she used. And then we have Miriam's uh, mission. Her, she, didn't, she had a part to play as well. And Moses' old, older sister, Marion, she had a part to play. Verse number four, the Bible says that that uh, Jacob had her there as as a watch, looking. And the, and the Bible says in verse number four that his sister stood afar off to it what would be done. And so here, that was her mission was to watch out and see what was going to happen and what would what would transpire. And so. Marion was on watch for her little brother. And Jacobin took that little basket boat and placed it in a certain spot. The Bible says by the riverbank. 
in there where the, where, where the current wasn't only just uh, very light. That's where she placed him among the bulrushes. And the Bible even talks about here, she laid him in the flames uh, among the river, among the bulrushes. And I can almost see the bulrushes that I read were where some of them grows about 10 or 12 feet tall. And, and uh, so she places the, the baby there in that little basket and it almost seems that the bulrushes is acting as a flame. A flame for that little bull. And, and so, and so, Eris Marion, she is, she is watching, and uh, and so this little basket boat out there uh, by the river's bank, just a little, little ways out, and and so the Bible says uh, that uh, Pharaoh's daughter here. Uh, it almost seemed like to me that uh, you know it was a, a daily routine for for the princess to come to come down to the river and bathe, and it almost seems like they put him near the very spot where she would come down to bathe in the river. So anyhow, here we have Mary up there somewhere in the trees, and she's looking out. And I, I don't know where Jacobin is, where she's anywhere else or not, or if she's home or what, but she's got the, her, oh, her, her oldest daughter, which was um, Moses' uh, sister, on watch. And, and the Bible tells us that, that uh, the princess with her maids, she had her, I guess her bodyguards with her, whatever, and uh, with her maids came, came down to the river here, to, to bay, to bay. And uh, so anyhow, uh, they discovered this, uh, this uh, little basket in the bulrushes. And, and the daughter of Pharaoh uh, was there. And of course, she was bathing. And after her bait, I guess, and she, they found the maid went and, <laughs> and found it. And then it tells uh, the princess about it, apparently that's how, that's how it went. Anyhow, so right at that time, when you see Miriam looking down and she's seeing what transpired. So out she pops from out of the trees and she goes down to the river. And of course, uh, uh, she's acting as if, you know, what she's... Maybe she came there before while they were in the river bathing. And it was just the routine. Anyhow, so... Uh, Marion says, uh, little baby, eh? Yes. Uh, you want me to go call the nurse for you? Oh, yes. She says, you go and call the nurse. And, and the Bible says uh, that uh, Mary went and called its mother in verse number nine. And then when, when Jacobet came, uh, the, uh, the princess said unto her, she says that, uh, would you take this child and nurse it for me? And I will give you thy wages. And the Bible says the woman took the child and nursed it. And so what a story that we have here. We have this mother and her little man and, and uh, little, little Mosey. I don't know if she called them that a lot. And then we have this mother's means, a, a little basket boat. And then we have Marion's mission. She's on watch. They're all involved. Moses' big sister played a major part in and, uh, watching and witnessing uh, what was done. Yes, his big sister was on standby for him. And, uh, and then while... Uh, Mother Jacobin was, was uh, you know, was had, uh, had working faith. Marion had watching faith. She was watching. And then we have uh, the baby Moses into the hand of his mother. And the mother takes him home to, to nurse him. And so what you got is a mother's mentoring. She mentored him. And, and it says, we read, take this child, the princess says, and nurse it for me, and I will pay thee thy wages. Now something else, there was a monetary part to it as well. This mother, she was going to get paid. How cool is that? To realize that here is the princess, a, a son now, adopt the son he would be, and... Uh, Jacobin takes him home. She got her baby back again. 
Amen. She got her baby back again. And so the mother of Moses, she was not moved by the money that the princes would pay for him. Amen. Not moved about that at all. She was moved by the mandate. She felt that she was given of the Lord concerning his, her son. And now that she had her boy back here, uh, he was on the bosom of the water. He was on the bosom of the water. Now he's back in the bosom of his mother again as she hugs him and, and cuddles him. And on top of that, she's getting paid from the royal treasury to do it. Uh, that's something to think about. And somebody said one ounce of mother is worth a pound of clergy. Yes. And so this mother, she, she, had, she had a work to do. And Moses, and she became Moses' counselor and coach. She, she, came, she became his teacher and his trainer. She became his, his mentor and molder. She molded his life. She, came, she became his minister and his ministrator as well, bless the Lord. And about 12 years, she had him for 12 years, they tell us, about 12 years old he was, and she had him all these years. And I tell you, she had him prepared for what he was going to face. She had him prepared for, for uh, the palace and all he would have to condemn with. And so then the sixth one is that mother makes her move. She makes her move. The Bible says in verse number 10 that the child grew and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, verse 10, and he became her son. That was adopted son. And so Pharaoh's daughter might have him now that she, that she has passed him over, but his mother had him first. His mother got him first. His mother taught him first. His, his mother molded and shaped him. And so now she moves him from her place to the palace. But he is nurtured and the word of God is instilled in his heart and instilled in his life. And so Moses knew who he was and what he was. And so that so much so that he was prepared, he was not swayed by the ways of the palace. He was not swayed by the palace. He was not swayed by Pharaoh. He was not swayed by Egypt one little bit. The Bible says over in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, by faith Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Man, I like that. He told her he wasn't his, her son. He was still Jehoshaphat's son, his mother's son. And the Bible says he refused. And because he was able to refuse, that he was able to choose. The Bible says he chose to suffer with the people of God rather to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He refused and he chose and he refused and he chose something that he could not lose his faith and his trust was in God he refused the external for the eternal he refused the temporary for the true for the true things the things of this life are fleeting fleeting but the things of the eternal life is firm and forever and so I say all that to say this. This concerning Moses' his faith and how he walked with God and turned away from the things of the world, it all traces back to his mother. It all traces back to the hope that she instilled in his heart and to the laws of God that she placed in his life and to the security that she placed in his soul. And so thank God for mothers. And Moses never, ever, never, ever got away from what his mother taught him. 
Thank God for godly mothers that will mold and mentor and shape the life of their children, of their sons, and of their daughters. We, we have had ten, many testimonies of people who thank God for the way that they were brought up and how, how they were taught the things of God and, and how the things of God was instilled in their hearts and life. And in mothers, you are listening today and you're a believer in Christ Jesus. Thank you for bringing your children up in the ways of the Lord. Bible says when they are old, they will not depart from it. Oh, they might stray, but it's still down within their heart and within their soul. And so if there's mothers today that are listening and, and you, you are not us saved. You are not bringing your children up in the way of the Lord. This is a, a wonderful day to do it, to commit your life to the Lord so that you may be able to train your child in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord as Mother Jehoshaphat did for Moses. And oh, little did they know that in that little basket would be a future leader and, that, and, a, and a one that would spearhead the deliverance of God's people from the Egyptian bondage. You never know who is in that little bassinet, Mother. You don't know who's there. And so you train that little one and pray for it. And so today, we want to pray for you. And we pray today that you will follow the Lord fully with all of your heart. Precious Lord, we thank you for these few words today concerning this great mother of faith. Lord, we realize that there's been so many great mothers of faith down through the years. Lord, we've heard even presidents uh, that have said uh, all that they were and all that they are, they owed to their darling mothers. Oh, God, today, we just pray for mothers. Lord, I ask, oh, God, that you would bless every one of them today. Lord, and may this day be special to them. Lord, not just another Mother's Day, but, Lord, a special day that something will happen in their lives, Lord, that they will not forget. And those today, Lord, who do not know you, we just pray that this might be the day when they will commit their lives to you. So, Lord, we pray for each one there that, that, that will listen in media land. We ask that you be round about them. We ask that you would minister to them, pour into their hearts and into their lives. Lord, we commit them all into your care and keeping. We pray it and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.